The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Like everyone else, I have to be careful not to break my projects as I build them, which means I have to avoid stupid mistakes. Today, we're presenting a public service announcement covering some of those stupid mistakes and how to avoid them. We're calling it How Not to Fry Your Projects. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I'd like to show you some small woodworking projects I've been making. I found these 24 inch by 3 inch by exactly 1 8 inch, that's the most important part, wood slats at Woodcraft, and they're really great, they're like $1.50 each. The laser goes right through them because it's solid walnut, there's no layers like plywood has. And I've made some cool objects, such as this outgoing mail holder, this is kind of handy depending on what kind of box you have at your place, and this cool pen holder, which holds 8 pens. So it's just fun sometimes to make simple projects that you can glue together and get some simple, fast, easy satisfaction. Electronics can be a fun and rewarding hobby, and for many people, a job. But there are a few things you should keep in mind before beginning any electronics project. Waste is always a danger. If you are not careful, all the time you spend building your object could be wasted. In this film, we will discuss ways to avoid this scenario and how not to fry your project. This young lad wants to learn about electronics. Let's call him Benji. Benji is excited about electronics and wants to build something to take to the school fair. Gee willikers, that'd be swell. But what's this? Benji wants to pet his cat before he works on the project. Petting a cat, walking on carpet, or really doing just about anything can create a static charge on your body. Benji's project is plugged into the wall. If Benji touches it, the static electricity in his body will discharge through the circuitry, possibly causing damage to his project. Benji can prevent this by wearing an anti-static strap. This strap prevents static charges from building up inside of Benji's body. You should be especially careful about this if you're walking on a carpet. If he doesn't have a strap, Benji can still discharge himself by touching a grounded object, such as a water faucet. Remember, don't let static discharge ruin your project. Unless, of course, your project is about static electricity. Well, what's this? Looks like little Benji is trying to desolder a component from a fiberglass sheet covered with copper traces. This snazzy new invention is called a circuit board. Benji tried to remove all the solder, but the component still stuck in place. Benji then uses a screwdriver to try and pry the part off the board. That's not the way to do things, Benji. Even if the part you're removing is bad, you don't want to damage the circuit board under it. In his haste, poor little Benji pulled up a copper trace with a component. Now he's going to have to fix that, and by golly, that takes time. Now Benji knows the right way to do it. Remove all solder from around the pins. Sometimes adding more solder can help flow the old solder out. Benji checks that the pin is loose using some tweezers. Once all the pins are loose, Benji removes the part and still has time to go play baseball with his friends. Finding a suitable dance partner. Hmm, not so easy. Finding a community where 100,000 engineers, the latest innovations, information, answers, experts, and design solutions come together. Much easier. Discover how we're listening to your feedback and building a better experience. Benji has just received a new component from Element 14. He's very excited to try it out for his science fair project. Whoa, slow down there, Benji. You can't just attach that component all willy-nilly. Different components use different voltages, and while some are tolerant, many can be damaged if you're not careful. Benji has attached a 3.3 volt part to his 5 volt microcontroller. Though it's not on fire yet, Benji can't figure out why it doesn't work. What's this? Benji has found the download data sheet link on element14.com. Benji studies the document and learns what correct voltages he should use. Here are some common voltages and the wire colors typically associated with them. Red is 5 volts, orange is 3.3, yellow is 12, and black is ground. By observing the colors of the wires and reading his data sheets, Benji knows the correct way to hook up his new component. It's also not a bad practice to test the wires with a multimeter to make sure the colors are correct and current is flowing. Preventing damage to your components is a wise economical strategy when working on these projects. 
Benji wants to embed a display for his project, and he's got a swell one here, fresh from the factory. But Benji needs to be careful when opening this, or any device. Many modern devices are snapped or glued together. This requires more force to take apart, and more force can cause more damage. Benji needs to look for the Void Warranty Sticker. This is a surefire place to find those pesky hidden screws. Now he's removed the screws, but the display still won't come apart. Benji needs to be careful. Too much fooling about and he could damage the thin glass display. Using a small sharp object like the screwdriver, Benji probes around the edges of the case. He occasionally twists the screwdriver to discover openings. Finally, it clicks, literally and figuratively. The case is held together by plastic tabs. Now he's doing it. By taking his time and being careful, Benji has opened up the LCD successfully. But taking things apart just doesn't relate to new products you've bought. Care must be taken when dismantling your own projects as well. Benji assembled the small oscilloscope a few months ago, but now he wants to replace the coin cell batteries with something better. Benji didn't think about the future and hot glued them in place. Now he needs to be very careful that he doesn't damage the surface mount components underneath. Benji first tries a sharp, blunt object. This gives Benji no fine control over what he is doing, and it will damage his project. Don't do it, Benji! Thankfully, little Benji has wisened up and is now carefully cutting apart the glue with an X-Acto knife. It may take him longer, but he'll save time by not damaging the project. Like incorrect voltages, reverse polarity can also be a problem in your project. Whenever possible, use keyed interlocking connectors like these, so the only way to hook them up is the correct way. But you can't always know which pin is which, and even though there's a 50% chance of you being right, there's a 50% chance of you being wrong. Is it worth the risk to damage your project? In this scenario, Benji needs to hook up 12 volts to power his device. He knows this is a power plug, but how can he find the polarity? Ah, Benji's using his good friend, the multimeter, to test. He knows that one of the connections must be ground. He also knows, by reading online, that the edges of a circuit board and all screw mounting holes are also ground. By testing which pin is connected to these mounting holes, he knows that it is ground, and the other one is positive voltage. Benji has figured out the pinout. Now let's go over the main points in how not to fry your project. 1. Avoid static buildup and take precautions not to discharge through your projects. 2. Be sure to use the correct voltage for all your components. This applies not only to the supply voltages, but signals as well. Don't send a 5 volt signal into a 3.3 volt device. 3. Take devices apart carefully. You may need to rebuild them someday, and you don't want to damage anything inside. 4. Be mindful of polarity, not only with power inputs, but in all the connections of your device. Now, just like Benji, you know how not to fry your projects! My rave today is watching things off Netflix. I can watch all sorts of TV shows at a great price. I just started watching Alias 10 years later than everyone else. Pretty cool show, but it gives me a rant today, and that is about Hollywood technology. There's a scene in Alias, for example, where she needs to open a digitally locked briefcase. She does this by touching the two leads of a multimeter to the surface of an LCD screen. Wow, was the prop guy sick that week? A multimeter is a pretty basic tool most people know about, so it's almost as dumb as a screwdriver being used for brain surgery. Oh well, that's the movies. Today's viewer question comes from Chris who asks, in the portable CNC machine episode, where did you get the couplings that went from the steppers to the threaded rods? Those couplings were made from aluminum and came from altamachine.com. They're actually fairly common at any 3D printing online store and they cost around $8 each. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to build a mailbox that alerts you if there's anything in it, continuing our lazy person tradition. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.